this is a real interesting device I found lately. It's a component identifier and tester, so you can plug in transistors and diodes and resistors. And it'll tell you the values. It'll tell you what it is. Very interesting device. This one has some drawbacks. Um, it has some shortcomings, and so I found another one online, which I ordered. And as you can see, it came as a kit. So. First I have to put it together, so I'll do two videos. I'll do one on putting it together and then I'll do one uh, finished and uh, we'll do a comparison. Okay, well it's time to get started. This is another one of those kits. It comes without instructions. The board's pretty well marked. I mean, you can see it's got all the stuff on it. Uh, but in the end, I'm going to check every component either with my uh, standard meter or my fancy new intelligent meter before I mount it up because once you mount it up and you get this thing uh, all together and if it doesn't work going back and debugging it, unsoldering parts, that's no fun. So it's easier just to do it right one time than it is to go back and do it again. Okay, I've got my board all cleaned up. It's time to start mounting up uh, parts. So I need to measure those, get them mounted up, start soldering. I'm going to use up the rest of my uh, really fine solder. This is a .015 inches. This is uh, 0.8 millimeters. Sorry about that, but that's what they're listed in. Um, a fine solder helps you melt the solder faster. There's less messing around uh, with uh, you know heat flowing into places you don't want it. Uh, so this just gets the job done faster, cleaner. It's harder to find. It can be harder to work with. It oxidizes more easily. But overall, I like a finer solder. Um, and when this runs out, I don't have much of this left. Uh, I'm going to go back to the uh, 0.8 millimeter. First components in place, measured, all that, and soldering is pretty good. Okay, now just got to repeat that another couple dozen times and I'm in good. Here's another reason to check every component before you install it because once I put this thing in place, see the board? Once I put this in place, there's no way to know what was on the board and without instructions, I can't know the value of that. I would literally have to start desoldering every resistor and checking the value against the number on the board. That would not be fun. So checking it with a meter before you insert it is really, really good advice. Here's a reason for testing. The top one is 3.3K and the bottom one is 33K. And if you're not really paying attention, that brown and that dark red can uh, throw you off and you can insert the wrong part in the wrong place. So another good reason to use your meter. Here we have all of our resistors in place. Notice I've lined up the bands. Um, yeah, resistors don't have polarization, but it just makes it look a little bit nicer. I also start on the crystal. I got the crystal in there. Uh, using fine solder really makes a difference. It really makes life a lot easier when you're soldering these things in here. And then the back looks pretty good, if I do say so myself. Okay, so let's move on to some of the bigger components. With some of the other components, like transistors and capacitors, I'm going to have to use this meter down here, because my regular meter doesn't have all that fancy stuff on it. Uh, again, testing everything before you insert it is certainly a lot easier than going back and debugging it. Okay, let's continue. Okay, pretty much close to being done. Don't have the really big components in yet. The socket uh, for the chip, the socket for the test, and then the uh, multi-digital selector. Those are not in there yet. Um, but, you know, if we take a look at the board, the components are the right height. They're all the same height. They're straight. Uh, they're aligned well. The bottom side looks good. So the next step is to finish this out with the bigger components and then we put the display on there and we're pretty much getting close to being done. Here's something to take notice of before you insert this socket and solder it in place. See the 1112333? It's not marked anywhere on that socket so once you put that thing in place, yeah, you're not going to know what it is. So I scratched it on the side and then used a marker um, to indicate which hole is which because that'll be important when you're testing. So here we are. I finished soldering in the things, poked in the chip. Uh, here's this digital selector. 
Uh, why did I put the female on this side? I don't know. There's no instructions to tell me otherwise. Um, so I just did it. The only thing you have to do with the display is with the display you have to solder in this header and it tells you which set of pins uh, but you can see from here it starts there continues over to there and yes you can get that wrong very easily but this tells you right here get in focus starts at pin 5 and goes to pin 12 and I figured out that what they mean is it starts at pin 5 this way so if you count over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 that's whatever the First one is soldered right there, pin 5 over to pin 12. Okay, so let's assemble it and do a smoke test. So here I plug in the display. I've got a capacitor in place. Got my 9 volt battery hooked up. And to activate this one, you push it on this. Okay, I don't see any smoke. And yeah, that looks reasonable. Okay, so the assembly's finished. And now what I want to do is I want to go give this a thorough workout and compare it to the other one I've got. Okay, well I hope you find this useful and interesting in your home electronics projects.